Okay, Assalamualaikum and hello. Welcome back. Okay. So, yesterday we already learned about the load profile. Okay, maximum load demand, base load demand. Okay. So, duration, uh, plot, uh, load duration, plot, this one. Okay, load duration curve. How to choose the uh, generation unit. Okay, based on the plot. Okay, and you have to calculate all the parameters. Okay, this one. The maximum demand, energy generated per day, average load and load factor. And uh, diversity factor. Okay, so today we continue with tariff. Okay. So before I continue, just want to remind you again, next week, okay, or 10 January, there will be test that's cover 3.1 and 3.2 generation and transmission okay so make sure you do the revision okay make sure you do the revision okay for test 2 okay the date is either 10 january or uh, 17 january okay uh, but most probably 10 january so make sure you check the telegram to see the update on the date Okay, uh, and the, uh, the time is 9 p.m. at night, okay, online, okay. Make sure you prepare the invigilation device, okay. You, you, you need to have a mirror or second device, okay, just to show the when, uh, your writing, okay. So, we continue with tariff. Okay, what is tariff? Okay, power duty charge customer for use of the electricity the rate at which electricity electrical energy is supplied to the customer is known as tariff okay so each company has its own set of tariff following this i think which is okay uh, usually you say charge amount of electricity use in kilowatt hour okay usually we use kilowatt hour kilowatt hour is energy eh? kilowatt is power kilowatt hour is energy and then capacity charge this one is the maximum demand in kilowatt okay how much maximum you use okay and also reactive power charge okay use uh, this one is the penalty for poor power factor okay usually power uh, supplier wants you to operate the power factor close to one okay but if you uh, it's very hard to maintain close to one Usually they set it around for TNB in Malaysia, okay, power supplier in Malaysia which is called TNB, okay, it's usually around 0 0.85, okay, and above. If lower than that, you have to pay a penalty, okay, usually we have to look all of these three, okay, depending uh, for domestic use, only we look at this, okay, but some of customer, other type of customer use we look three of this okay charge are usually made okay let me make it larger sorry uh, i doesn't respond okay okay in malaysia we charge are usually made for each month okay some supply authority encourage customer to use high voltage by reducing the tariff charge for kilowatt hour consumption while others do not okay if the customer use a lot of power okay uh, very high power we uh, they are usually encouraged to use the higher voltage okay a uh, normal customer domestic customer is usually 230 or 415 volt but for high power, uh, it can be either 11 kilovolt or 33 kilovolt, or sometimes much more higher. Okay, another incentive in the form of lower kilovolt kilowatt hour charge during off peak hour, usually from midnight to dawn, is given to a customer to encourage them to operate during this hour when the overall electricity consumption is low. Okay, this one is just incentive. Okay, ah. Uh, let me show you what it mean. Okay, let us look on the first point. Okay, so you have a generation. Okay, it go to the 
TX transformer. Okay, transformer usually we call TX. Yeah, this one maybe is 11 kV, depending of the generation. Maybe this one supply to 132 kV or 275 kV, okay, or 500 kV, depending. Ah, eh? uh, and then uh, it goes to the TX. Okay, transformer. This one becomes lower, 33 kV. Okay. Some customer tap this and okay, this is load. Okay, depend on the customer. Sometimes they if they use very high, just tap directly to the transmission line, not tap directly. They have also the transformer here and then goes here. But this one on their own. Okay. And some customer tap to the 33. Okay. And they have the transformer, or maybe the machine is operated at 33. Okay. And some tap on 11. Okay. TX also. 33. Uh, 11 KV. Something like that. Okay. So this is main by point number 2. And then point number 3, another incentive is to lower the uh, kilowatt charge during off peak hour. So I mentioned before. Okay. So this one is around. 8, 8 p.m. 8 a.m. This one is 12 p.m. Okay. So the load profile are usually commonly look like this. Okay. During the day is very high and this is very low. Okay. So incentive to make sure that the load, remember uh, when the peak load is very high, it's not very good. Okay. Uh, let me show you back this one. Load factor. Okay, remember, if one is much more better, this one better, this one is not. So when this happens, it's not very good. So how to overcome this? They make an incentive. Okay. So for example, this is 0 0.3. Uh, I, I'm not sure I not to remember. Okay, 0 0.3 cent per kilowatt hour. Okay, something like that. Or 30 cent, I think. 30 cent per kilowatt hour. So at this time, this one is maybe 20 cent per kilowatt hour. This one is also 20 cent per kilowatt hour. So this, okay. So the operation might be shifted at this side. Okay. So the load can become much more, okay, flat. Okay. So load factor is much more lower so that is mean by the incentive just to make sure it is doesn't use too much at the daylight okay so the TNB new tariff implemented uh, from 1st uh, June 2011 provide 16 group of customer so they have division depending on the customer so you have 16 group so tariff A is residential, okay. This is the standard one. Tariff B, C, one, and C two are for commercial, okay. Tariff B, E one, E two, E three is for industrial, okay. Special tariff for mining, public lighting, agriculture are also available, okay. So different group of people, different tariff, okay. Actually, uh, tariff A is, I think, if not mistaken, this is the cheapest one. Okay, or maybe this uh, you have to look back at the tariff. Okay, so this is the tariff for A. Okay, tariff A is the domestic use. Okay, basically this is housing, okay, normal housing. Okay, they divided into the first 200 kilowatt, okay, 21.8 cents, and then the next 100 kilowatt is 33.4, okay, and so on and so on. Okay, and then you have a minimum monthly charge. This one cannot be avoided. Okay, how to use this tariff? Okay, so many of you already done the uh, one, okay, assignment one. So most of you already know. Okay, this is just a recap. So for example, you use 400 kilowatt hour. So what happened is that you have to divide this okay so 200 
multiply by 200 okay the first 200 okay and then the next 100 okay and then you plus it okay uh, 200 hey, sorry this one is okay 200 multiply by the cents 21.8 and then plus the next 100 is okay multiply by Maybe this one, eh, I change it to 150. Easier to see, okay. So, 100, we, uh, which is 300 right now. Multiply by 33.4 and then plus 300. Another 100 multiply by 4, 40. And then, the rest is, you can see here, 200, 100, 100, this is 400. And then, you only have 50 left. So 50 multiplied by, so this one, this one already used, this one already used, this one. Okay, 40.2. So you get the cost. Okay, so let me calculate using the calculator. Okay, so you get 10503.4 cents or you move this two times. Okay, RM. 105.03 okay so this is the cost of your electricity okay this is how you calculate it okay it is step by step okay so this is the tariff for domestic how about tariff b this is a low voltage commercial okay so for overall met, uh, consumption between 0 to 200 it is charge 39.3 okay minimum is 0 r uh, through it and 20 cent so this is the first 200 and then if more than 200 it is cost this one okay so this is for tariff b and then this is for tariff c medium voltage general commercial use okay so for this one each kilowatt of uh, okay maybe i show you example here Okay, so for tariff B, okay, so tariff B, for example, you use uh, 350 kilowatt hour, okay, so the energy use is 350 kilowatt hour, so if you look at this tariff, you can see that uh, to first 200 is 200 multiplied by 39.3 and then plus the rest, Okay, the rest is 150 okay multiply by 43.0 so you get in cent okay and then you can convert to rm okay just divide by 100 okay so this is the tariff b okay how about tariff c1 okay so tariff c1 is much more easy okay let me Okay, uh, actually it's much more complicated because you have to consider the maximum demand. Okay, so this one depends on the maximum demand. Okay, of course the minimum uh, charge is 600 ringgit. Okay, if you lose, uh, use less than that, you also need to pay minimum. Okay, for example, you calculate everything, the charge is only 300 ringgit. But you cannot just pay 300 ringgit. You have to pay 600 ringgit. Same as before. Okay. So C1 is also almost the same. Okay. Maybe we will look at this later. You have to pay both. Okay. The maximum demand. Okay. The maximum demand. You can see here RM per kilowatt. And then you have to also to pay the energy. You have to pay the power. And of course the energy. Okay. C2 is also uh, the same. Almost the same. Okay, you have to pay the maximum demand per month during the peak period. Okay, and then you have to calculate the uh, calculate the energy during the peak period and off peak period. This one I already mentioned before. Okay, peak period. Okay, peak period you have to pay much more higher cost and off peak it is less. Okay, if uh you have to check back the TNB if not mistaken. The off peak is between 12 a.m. to 8 if not mistaken. Okay, you have to check back. Okay, 
so this one uh, maybe I will show you later okay and then you have a tariff D okay low voltage industry okay this one is medium voltage uh, peak uh, medium voltage industry okay C1 and C2 tariff low voltage industry okay this one is more industry this one is for commercial commercial is uh, for example shop okay this is shop uh, industry is um, industrial okay so you have uh, uh, overall more consumption here okay and then one consumption more than 200, uh, 200 kilowatt okay this is less than 200 okay this is small okay this one is the special tariff okay for all kilowatt hour okay this is the cost this is for special one okay and another one is the tariff E1, okay, medium voltage industrial, okay. So this one for each kilowatt, okay, this one you have to uh, pay the maximum demand as well as the energy use, okay. So you can see all of these tariff, okay. Make sure you you don't need to uh, memorize this all, okay. This one usually will be given. So, but you need to know how to calculate it. Okay, so let looks uh, at the example. Okay, so Madam Kamala consume 200 kilowatt hour of electricity. This is the energy. So make sure you know the unit kilowatt hour is energy. Okay, determine her electricity bill for the month. Okay, so as I mentioned before, 300, and then you have to look at the tariff. Okay, so this is a residential means that tariff A. Okay, and make sure this is a uh, tariff for TNB in Malaysia. Different country use different tariff. Okay, so you have to check your tariff. Usually they available at the website. So you can see here 300. So the first uh, 200 is 21.8 cents, and then 2000 to 201 to 100 this 28 okay above is this one so this is i think this one is a newer tariff okay 2017 or 2016 i think so this one is the old one which has many division okay but for new one i think this one is the new one okay uh, no worry uh, tariff will be given you just need to know how to calculate it of course uh, as i showed before the first 200 of you have to multiply by for the first step okay and then the second one, the excess one, is because this is 300, you have to multiply by 100, okay? So 300 minus 200, okay? And then multiply by the second tariff. So your the bill is, you just add it up together. You get the answer. Okay, uh, another example here. Okay. Okay, so we look at another example. This is for... Uh, E2, E2 tariff, uh, which is, where is it, okay, this one, medium voltage, uh, industrial tariff, so this one is actually much more complicated, okay, so let me clear this up first, and example 3, okay, you can see here factory use, zero, uh, from 8am to uh, 6pm, it used to 100 kilowatt, which power factor 0 0.8, a 0 0.9 and 18 8 uh, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. 1600 kilowatt so if you look back at the tariff E1 okay so you have peak and off peak hour okay so you have to be careful because you have to divide the load so I suggest you draw the load profile first okay so this is 8 a.m. okay and 6 p.m. or you can use the 24 hour system uh, much more easier I think so 18 something like this so at this time you use So you use two one zero zero kilowatt, and then the rest, okay, twenty four, okay, 
24 this is 0 so you use 1600 kilo 1 1600 kilo 1 okay so you have to be careful okay you have to know okay uh, the question asks you to calculate the energy consumed during hour and off peak hour okay so you have to know that okay when the time is off peak and peak hour so this one you have to look back at the tariff if not mistaken this one is from 10 a.m until 8 a.m sorry 10 p.m so 10 p.m is around here okay so this is 10 10 is 22 right So here, 22, okay, until 8. So this, at this point, you have the off peak, okay, this is peak, and then this is off peak, okay. So you have to divide this properly. So we calculate the peak first, okay peak period so for peak period you can see here is uh, 2100 2100 okay you have 18 minus 8 okay the hour and then you have this point plus uh, 1600 from 22 to 18 make sure you use the higher hour minus the lower hour Okay, you cannot have negative energy. Okay, negative hour. You cannot have that. Okay, this is for peak hour, uh, peak period. So this one is, uh, just use your calculator. Let me pause the video first. So you get uh, 27,400 kilowatt hour and then off peak hour, off peak period. So of peak period you can see here 1600 1600 24 minus 22 okay and then plus 1600 at this point uh, from 8 minus 0 okay so basically 1600 uh, 8 plus 2 is 10 okay so 1600 0 kilowatt hour so this is the energy use from peak and peak off of peak period okay so if you sum it up you can get the answer okay so this is okay the answer is correct so we move on to the next electrical bill okay uh, so if I look at here is not updated okay so uh, basically this is you have three type of tariff okay first one is the maximum demand okay this is the cost and then peak or uh, peak or period and off peak period so you have three tariff you have to consider so first of all you have already calculate this okay and then okay so first you have to calculate the maximum demand charge okay you have three charge okay so the first charge is uh, a okay how about a is the maximum demand charge okay so according to the tariff here it is 31.7 okay i think this is the old tariff it's okay uh, so you can look at the first uh, new tariff so it is 24.2 cents and then multiply by the maximum demand which is maximum demand is 2500 so multiply by 2500 so you get 0500.00 okay so this is the maximum demand charge okay and the second demand uh, the second charge is the peak uh, peak energy pkw hash 
okay peak kwh so you already calculate the peak kwh is 21000 okay and then you have to multiply the peak charge okay so you can see here peak energy is 30.4 so let us look okay this is uh, the old one so we just follow the new one which is 0 0.234 okay and this is for one day and remember tnb is for one month so just multiply by 30 okay so you get uh so 6 4 is 1 1.6 multiply by 30 so you get the answer okay and c is the uh, pitch of p okay of p kilowatt hour so you can see here this is your off peak which is 6400 multiplied by the off peak cost okay one zero point one four four is the new one okay the old one is 18.7 okay so the new one or the old one i'm not sure so this one just take the 0 0.144 and then multiply by 30 remember one month this is for one day only Okay, if they give the data for one month, you don't need to multiply by 30. Okay, if uh, they give uh, day, okay, one day you have to multiply by 30. Okay, so the charge is always for one month. Okay, so you get 2304. Okay, multiply by 30. Okay, so you use your calculator to calculate this. Okay. So tot uh, then you can calculate total is equals to A plus B plus C. Okay, maximum demand plus the peak charge plus the off peak charge. So you get so you get this one. Okay, three to one nine six eight and close zero zero. So three hundred and twenty one thousand ringgit. Okay, alright. So be careful eh, with the uh, RM and cent because this is in cent. Okay, make sure you convert it to RM by dividing by 100. Okay, so make sure you know how to calculate this. Okay, we move on to the next part which is power factor. Okay, ma many of you already know what is power factor. Power factor is an index used to compute the efficiency of index of the electrical usage. Okay. So index means that it is from 0 to 1. So I repeat back, power factor is from 0 to 1 only. Okay, higher is better. Okay, low power factor shorten the life of electrical appliance and cause this power system losses to TNB. Okay, so basically low power factor is bad for transformer, okay, switch gear and everything, okay, usually for transformer. Okay, and it can cause losses to the TNB. So, to understand power factor, we will start with definition. Okay, so if you recall back, kilo, uh, when you want to calculate the power factor, you need to know the kilowatt. Okay, working power, the actual power. K bar is the reactive power. It is a um, power of which magnetic equipment such as transformer, motor, and relay produce from uh, the magnetizing flux. And KVA is the apparent power which is the sum summation of kilowatt and k bar okay so vectorized summation so power factor is the ratio of working power to the apparent power this is another definition you can use power factor is kilowatt divided by kva okay so efficient uses of electricity power factor must be approached to one okay power factor that less than 0.85 show inefficient use of electricity so how to calculate power factor? You can use this formula. Okay, kilo kVA. Uh, P divided by square root of k, uh, k uh, P squared plus uh, Q squared. Okay, so this is another formula you can use. Okay, low power factor is caused by in use uh, inductive load. Okay, which are the source of reactive power. Okay. Uh, wait, eh? yes, okay. Which are the source of reactive power? Okay, so uh, basically, motor, okay, usually motor in the industry is here inductive load, 
That's why you have to do a power factor correction. Remember, recall back power factor correction in your assignment one. Okay, so this is the function of adding doing power factor correction just to increase the power factor okay this is the example of inductive load transformer inductor motor okay high intensity discharge lighting okay so inductive load constitute a major portion of the power consumed by the commercial and industrial sector okay so at home and uh, it doesn't constitute a major portion of the power okay but for commercial they usually I uh, use this a lot of this power so customer are advised to follow this step install capacitor KBR okay generator okay so uh, basically install capacitor corrector synchronized generator or synchronized motor okay so basically remember power factor correction if you increase the capacitor the well, power factor will increase okay something like that so this is just another way synchronous generator and synchronous motor just to uh, another way to do a power factor correction okay minimize uh, operation of idling or light load motor okay so light motor uh, produce a higher uh, q okay so so avoid okay avoid use uh, light loaded motor and then avoid operation equipment above the rated voltage okay and replace standard motor that are burned out with energy efficient motor that is how to improve your power factor okay this is the theory you need to know so what is the benefit of improving power factor okay so the first benefit is reducing the kilowatt billion demand okay low power factor require high reactive power so when the power factor is low you have a high kvr and apparent power Okay, which the TNB needs to supply. Therefore, a facility with low power factor force the TNB to increase the generation transmission capacity in order to handle extra demand. Okay, and by increasing the power factor, customer use less KBR, result a less K watt, which equates to saving. Okay, so maybe I should explain this. Okay, this is an important knowledge that you need to know. Okay, for example, okay, you have a TNB here, TNB, okay, okay, you have a TX here, maybe this one change to Gen, okay, this is TX and then TX, and then this is your load, okay, so for example, your load use one kilowatt, okay, and one kilo uh, okay var okay so i think okay three easy pentagoras theorem and this is four uh, which result in five kva okay so remember uh, s is equals to square of p plus q squared E, Q, S, okay, something like that. So if you uh, use this, actually for the transformer, it needs to uh, have the rating of five kVA, okay. This one maybe higher. Uh, this is just an example five kVA. So generation has to supply five kVA, okay. But if you do power factor correction, okay. You do power factor correction here okay and okay before i forget the current is also uh, for example here maybe this is 20 ampere so you need a thick wire for example okay but if you do a power factor correction here so you can for example eliminate q q just becomes zero so right now your p2 is maintained 3 kilowatt Okay, but S also become S2 is also become 3 kilowatt. So this is the new. So this is the old. Okay. So basically you can reduce the current, maybe uh, 12 ampere. So this one is become 3 kilo ampere, 3 kilo 
kilovolt, sorry, it's K V A V A. Okay, so you only can have generate three K V A. So basically, the rating reduce, reduce. Okay, just by adding capacitor. That's why the TNB propose a penalty. Okay, because the cost of supplying Q is quite high. Okay, if you eliminate the need for Q, you can reduce the everything. Okay, it can reduce the cost, make the system more efficient. Okay, and cost effective. So this is mean by all of this. So I uh, make sure you know what is the benefit of improving the power factor. Okay, ah uh, this one uh, another benefit. This is uh, for the system. Okay, benefit two is for the cost. Remember that I say you have you need to pay the penalty. Okay, penalty companies all around the world charge customer an additional charge when the power factor is less than 0 0.95. Okay, and fact some utility are not obligated to deliver electrical this to the customer that at any time power factor falls below 0 0.85. Thus, customer can avoid by additional such as by increasing the power factor. In TNB, in Malaysia, okay, so in Malaysia, it is 0 0.85. Okay, so that's why, okay, first, the benefit is for the smaller system, okay, more efficient system. The second one is just to eliminate surcharge. This is the benefit of improving power factor. Okay, the third, increase the system capacity and reduce the power losses. Okay, so this is another, I uh, have uh, much more efficient. Okay, and another benefit can increase the voltage level. Okay, so power factor cost the power system. Okay, loss, uh, cost losses and cost voltage drop. Okay, so when you have uh, maybe this one you will learn at another topic. Okay, I'm not sure which topic. So basically, when you have a low power factor, okay, low PF, your voltage is reduced. Okay. Uh, so be careful, eh? The low power, low power factor lagging. Okay. If you have high and uh, low power factor leading. We increase okay, so that is mean by that, but usually it is lagging because of the motor okay, the L leading is caused by the capacitor, but this is rare. This one is the com uh, normal one, so basically, as a result, the voltage is reduced. So, if you raise the power factor, customer can minimize the voltage drop along the feeder okay. So, power factor surcharge. So this one you have to calculate. Power factor surcharge is imposed when you are power factor less than 0 0.9. Okay, for 100 and, uh, 132. And uh, if you are lower than 132, you are 0 0.85. Okay. So if you are usually this one, 132 keep Okay, you have to make sure that your power supply is, your load is more than 0 0.85. How to calculate okay power factor such as for customer with electrical supply below 132 kV is calculated as follow okay so 1.5 surcharge of the current bill for 0 0.01 less than 8 0.85 power factor and then 3% surcharge for the current bill for every 0 0.01 less than 0.7% power factor so how to calculate this? Okay, I think most of you already done the assignment one. You need, uh, you already know how to calculate this. Okay. So I give you examples here. Okay. Uh, let's us uh, look at the uh, example four. E four. Okay. So your current bill is RM two thousand ringgit. Okay. And your power factor is zero point eight. Okay. So how to calculate this? So uh, if you have the surcharge equals to, so you can see here, 
Okay. So remember the first level is 0 0.85. So 0 0.85 minus your current. Okay, your current for factor 0 0.8. Okay. And then remember for each 0 0.01 of this one, uh, you have to pay 1.5%. Okay, 1.5 divided by 1000. Okay, eh, sorry, divided by 100. Okay, 1.5%. 1 so this is 1.5%. Okay, and then you have to multiply by your current bill, 2000. So you get the surcharge is RM25. Uh, 200, uh, 150 ringgit. So this is first example. How about the example five? Okay. So current bill is RM 2000. Okay. And the search. Okay. And the search is. Okay. The power factor. Is equals to 0 0.75 so if it is 0 0.75 is still under the first one okay this one okay only less than uh, 0 0.75 you have to pay 3% okay if 0 0.75 you have to pay 1.5 okay. so also the same surcharge okay so the uh, the starting one is 0 0.85 minus 0 0.75, and you have to pay uh, 0 0.0 each 0 0.01 power factor. You have to pay 1.5 percent. Okay. Okay, multiply by 2000. Okay. So you have to pay surcharge is 300 ringgit. Okay, this is a penalty you have to pay extra if you don't take care of your profit. And the next example, okay, for the next example is much more uh, lower. Okay, so if you recall back here, if you have profit lower than 0 0.75, your surcharge is 3%. Okay, the first uh, 0 0.85 to 0 0.75, you only have to pay 1.5%. But for the rest, you have to pay 3%. So how to calculate this? Okay. So basically, you have two. Okay. Two surcharge. Okay. So surcharge. Okay. Is equals to. Okay. 0 0.85 minus. Um, minus 0 0.75. Okay. This is the first charge. Okay. This one is 0 0.01, of course, multiplied by 1.5, divided by 100. So 1%, eh, 1.5%. Okay. And then you have to pay the second part. Okay. So 0 0.75 minus the current power factor, 0 0.6. Okay. And of course, you have to pay for each 0 0.05. Okay. So 0 0.05, eh, sorry, 0 0.01, multiply by 3%. Okay. And then, of course, you have to pay up the bill. Okay. Multiply by 2,000. Okay. So you can see here the surcharge, okay. The penalty is almost half of the current bill. That's why you have to make sure your power factor is high. Okay, because the penalty is quite high. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so make sure you know how to calculate the penalty. Okay, our factor penalty. That's it for this topic. Okay, so for next week we have we will start a new topic, chapter four. Okay, chapter four, which is a machine. Okay, so again, make sure you slide in your attendance. Okay. And don't forget about the test next week. Okay, 10 January or 17 January, but uh, most probably it is 10 January. Okay, so be prepared. Okay, this is the topic that is included in the test. Okay, and make sure to submit your assignment. Okay, assignment one, eh, assignment two.
Okay, that's it. So, thank you.